Welcome to another Three Aficionados episode. I'm your host, uh, Steve Yip, with uh, Daniel Ross and Peter Pitten. We're here to talk about all things passionate about uh, cars, watches, uh, anything analog. And uh, today we're going to be talking about some watch news with the Hamilton Khaki Pilot, as well as the Patek Philippe recent releases. And finally, some car news and the garage updates. But first, let's get into it with a little bit of what are we drinking today? And we'll crack a beer or a Zima or whatever we're drinking today. Or Daniel's already opened it, so you won't even hear that. You'll just have to listen to uh, mine yeah, and, and Daniel's uh, synthetic sound. Clearly, Daniel's already been into his hydroponic collection today. Uh, what are we drinking <laughs> here today, Daniel? I've got a nice uh, Waterloo Dark. It's a nice dark beer. Waterloo Dark? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had a few Ooh. sips off the top already. What about you guys? <laughs> How much of that Waterloo Dark is inside of you? <laughs> uh, I was, this is the last thing I had in my fridge. So we're going to, for the next episode, I will uh, I'll put it in my... Uh, in my uh, itinerary to stock myself up with some craft beer. There's a really cool craft beer place in uh, Lethbridge here. So next time I'll make sure to have something a little bit more exotic. But for, for, tonight, those, for those who uh, realize that this is a podcast and realize that uh, Peter is holding up a can to the camera, that was a can of truly cherry as uh, I was actually, I believe, supposed to be named if I was a girl. Was it Cherry or Candy? I was supposed to be named Candy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there. yeah a little oversharing. <laughs> but now we're that? going to be referring to Peter as truly Cherry from here on out. <laughs> and I'm drinking the Apex Predator White Raven. <laughs> that name is equally embarrassing. <laughs> White Raven. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. All right. Cheers, cheers guys. guys. Cheers, everybody. All right. So uh, let's get into uh, what are we wearing on today's wrist? Wrist check for uh, not Daniel, because he's still drinking that dark stout. Uh, so Peter, good. I see some uh, translucency yeah. on the wrist. Yeah. Why don't you describe it to us for those people who are uh, visually <laughs> impaired, but not hearing impaired? So we have on the wrist today the. Uh... I think it's the 21 SKE or 2100 SKE, the, this uh, G-Shock, or no, I messed that up. I so messed. No, I maybe I did. I don't even know. Anyways, it's the Cassie Oak for anyone who uh, doesn't know. Uh, it is the clear Cassie Oak too. I believe this one is called the Jellyfish, but I just got home. This is my workhorse uh, right now, currently, just because I can put this on my wrist and not be concerned about it. That's one of the nicest things is, is like if I bang this thing off of something or whatever, it's not like, oh, did I just hurt my watch or injure my watch? It's like, oh, this thing can literally handle anything. So G-Shock is good for that reason. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like just good to throw on your wrist and don't have to worry about it. It also looks damn good too, honestly. I like this, this case oh. and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's got a good aesthetic please to it. It kind of reminds me of an AP in a sense, but it's not. It's got a bite to itself. But yeah, I like it in the clear case too, or the clear everything actually. But yeah, how, clear strap, clear case. How attainable is it, uh, Peter? And like I hear the Cassie Oak is a little bit more challenging. Like what's the jellyfish like? Did you just walk in and just find it? Or did you have to like put your name down for a while? No, I have no so idea I, what the process is. I like to scour the, the back. Uh, I actually found it, I'm pretty sure I've I if I I don't know if it was this one, but I feel like I got it off eBay maybe or something like that. Cause yeah, I couldn't find it on any form of retail sites. Uh, Cause I, when I looked for it, I was specific about going with the clear model. I just thought it looked cool kind of thing. So I looked for that one forever. And yeah, you can't find it for most. Uh, I guess you would say standard retail uh, places. I found it off of eBay, and I actually found it for a really cheap price for what I think they were selling for. I can't remember at the moment, but it was even cheaper than what I found other ones for at the time kind of thing. And that was a while ago. So yeah, it's surprisingly they're not super obtainable for being like a not super expensive watch, but that's kind of cool about it is it's like, you don't, I like for surprisingly, I've never seen another one, even though it's not like they're crazy expensive. It's just, no, I've actually, I don't think I've seen it even another one in any of the other colors. 
I don't think I've seen it on a single wrist. So you I don't think very unique. No. no. Truly Cherry is truly unique in his jellyfish wrist. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys rocking tonight? Daniel? I, uh, I've just, I've got my trusty BMW chronograph on today. So not, uh, I don't have much as much to say about it today. You know, it's good watch. I enjoy it, but I just wear it. You know, I kind of as like a default watch at the moment. So um, it's probably getting more use than it should be, which is <laughs> which is leading to maybe almost like starting to get a little bit. No, I'm not. I'm not getting bored by it. No, that's not at all. That's I love this thing so much. Yeah. yeah. You want to see yeah. it for the YouTubers? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Put it on the camera. And what, what kind of camera. strap is and it? Then, and everyone listen, listen quietly. <laughs> listen quietly. <laughs> Shut the fuck up if you're listening. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. Nice. Here. Looks good on that strap. Thank you. You know, I, I like this strap. Oh, I can't get my camera to focus. There, there we go. go. Ooh. He's got a focus. I like black. Yeah. Looks good. All blacked nice. out. Yeah, it's a, it came with, came with a nice uh, steel bracelet, but I uh, I changed it to this leather bracelet. I like it. It's got I, that uh, nice chunk to that. Wear it on the yep. desk quite a lot, so I got <laughs> sick of dragging it around on the brace on the desk. Yeah. Well, make yeah. sure that you refocus your camera now so that we can appreciate your African art for those who are tuning in on YouTube. I thought you were uh, going to say my beautiful face. You're well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your beautiful face and that beautiful African art. Thank you, thank you. With that being said, let's get into an awkward transition from uh, <laughs> the beautiful face of Daniel and uh, African art uh, to my wrist. I'll ask myself a question of what am I wearing today? <laughs> what am I wearing today, Steve? <laughs> well, that's a good question, Steve. Uh, today we're wearing a, a Rolex Submariner Sermit, or for those who like to give it an awful nickname, it's the Starbucks. So it's got the black dial and the ceramic bezel. Um, oh, we were talking great. about ranking. Yeah, of all the three uh, subs with the, and for those who are listening, that's me playing with the bezel. It's really nice and loud. Um, so I actually feel like I like the clicks of this bezel the most. I don't know what, why I feel like it's probably the same as the Hulk, but I don't know. I think that uh, I still rank it the third of the of all three. So I'd say Kermit, Hulk, and Sermit. But this is still a really great you know, watch. I think that it, it has a nice wrist presence and actually makes my thin baby wrist look much more thicker with three C's. And I really like the tapered lugs, the way they uh, come right into the, the bracelet. So actually what they did was to make the lugs a bit more tapered was they brought it in a little bit more, but they also uh, expanded in, in the width of the uh, bracelet links. So the links are actually a little bit odd to me because I've been looking at the same links over and over again, um, but it, it does look a lot more elegant, but it does cause the the wrist presence to be much chunkier and just does generally feels quite heavy but it's got the new movement it's a great uh watch um i've been a bit reluctant to put scratches on it because it's the i say it still gets the least love but i thought you know life's too short why leave it in the safety deposit box and who am i saving it for so uh I, i'm enjoying wearing it a little bit there I think the other thing to note as well is that the clasp was changed a little bit. So the clasp is actually more, uh, it's wider and I think it's a little bit longer. So um, yeah, I don't know. I think that I'd still say Hulk would be the great daily driver um, and it's a strong challenge to the Kermit but the Sermit still takes a third to me because it just doesn't have the same presence like the dial that sparkles on the Hulk. But and it doesn't have the vintage cues of the Kermit. Daniel, are you going to tell me I'm full of shit? I don't know. I had a question for you because there's like a, maybe in contrast to the G Shock that we have on one end here with that watch. When you put it on, can you can you kind of put it on and forget about it, or are you sort of always aware of it as long as you're wearing it? I think the nice thing about it, especially the Hulk and the Sermit, is that you can always 
um, micro adjust um, with this uh, glide lock uh, clasp. You can slide it in and out. Um, so I'd say that it's pretty good from that perspective. That being said, it does feel quite heavy on the wrist. And it, certainly if it's not tight-ish to the wrist, it rolls around and certainly feels like it could be quite heavy. Um, but that's just me splitting hairs. I think it's a great daily driver and I'd really enjoy wearing it regardless. Um, I was just on call. I was telling you guys over the weekend and rounding, I'd never wear this. I'd always be like worried about banging it up, especially because I, I told you, I'd, I don't know how much I, I'm going to likely keep it for a long, long term. Um, but the daily drivers for that were actually, I, I was enjoying wearing the 5513 over the weekend. So it was a toss up. I was actually wearing that this afternoon, but I was like, I, I think I need to show you this because we were talking about the where do things rank. I still say this is third, but I still enjoy it. I think it's awesome. And it's nice to wear something that's like the brand new cutting edge thing. So I know how privileged I am. So why, why put it in the safety deposit box? I mean, the other thing is the values of these actually went down. They're the least valuable of all the three green subs. And I think that Hulk and the Kermit, depending on what Kermit you have, they're pretty high up in, in Canadian dollars. I think they're in the mid twenties. Uh, whereas like the Hulk or sorry, the Sermit is actually roughly around 18 to 20. Um, so yeah, why sell it for now? I think it's a, it's a good hold. I don't need to, to bleed watches right now after selling my car. So we'll get into those little bits of news in a little bit. Um, so we've dwelled enough on watch updates of what's on a wrist. Actually, I want to talk to you about uh, what are you uh, aiming for in the future for watch acquisitions. And I think that we, we all have interesting spaces and um, maybe that will roll into our watch news. Um, but uh, Peter, what's what's next for you in your next watch conquest? Uh, it, it depends on like, if if it was like the, the stars aligned and like everything worked out perfectly, I would find one of those turquoise dialed day just for, uh, they're so fucking expensive right now, but if the price was like somewhat reasonable, 110% sorry what what do they cost now i think they're i haven't checked recently but when i looked like months ago they were almost i think up to i think they were like high teens kind of thing really yeah i'm no. pretty sure and i don't know i don't know now what they're they're going for but but it's it's kind of crazy how how stuff has swayed the market but yeah um who knows though i probably won't have the money to afford that so in the sense of stuff that i'll actually be able to afford uh maybe we'll find out but that's been something and it sucks because i like i so wanted that when i saw that watch originally i was like i need need to find out where the heck i can get this thing because i just saw it and i was like i could see this taking off kind of thing not even for that matter just because i would keep it but i was like this thing's just so beautiful and yeah, now I waited and now it's unobtainable, I think at this moment. So it's like, uh, you should have told me to what, go get it. I know. And that's what I was thinking <laughs> of you, but I was in the moment of like sitting on it where I was like, well, but, but I, I don't know. Now I thought about, it, I was like, eh, that'd be like a good, like, like present to get yourself in the near future, but I don't think it's going to happen. So yeah. uh, besides that, maybe some form of a carbon fiber or watch i think that'd be cool i don't know what yeah but that's if it, Doxa. yeah that thing's really really cool and i looked at that as well and that's a little bit more uh attainable price range as well so and you got to put in priorities in the aspect too i mean i should at some point also be looking at the house not a not a, another expensive watch so, like, you don't need a house yeah right that's what i thought just live with my parents forever and collect expensive watches <laughs> I, I always liked the one line from chef Paul Ruiz, he'd uh, sometimes like guest on Smoking Tire. And I think that they also had a watch spinoff show. And uh, unfortunately, he passed, but he would uh, talk about how every man needs to have one watch that he can take right off his wrist. If his woman kicks him out of the house, that he can at least take that watch and sell it and afford a bed, a TV and a month <laughs> rent. So, you know, aspirations for being a shitty person and having your, your partner kick you out. So, uh, Daniel, <laughs> not to uh, link things at all to uh, <laughs> you of having to uh, 
make you know bartering uh, after being kicked out on the street after I kicked you out of my house. Uh, what, like what's, on, what's on your radar of uh, future watches? Well, actually, maybe more uh, for like a an, a near a near future purchase of the uh, Vostok Amphibia has just uh, come across my come across my uh, I don't know come across my desk come come kind of interested in it. I had read an article about how for uh, watches for under two hundred bucks, this uh, Russian made automatic watch had the worst bracelet <laughs> that that said author had ever experienced in their career as a watch specialist which piqued my interest because there's some, <laughs> there's a pretty good crap out there you really like uh, shitty wrist uh, <laughs> bracelets right like the, i think we were talking about that other uh your esquire with it's like shattered bra yeah, bracelet or right. wrap I'm aiming exclusively for a collection of watches that I can't wear. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm going for. We need to get you a pocket watch. <laughs> not a not a watch that you don't wear. <laughs> a watch you can't wear. That's a, oh, okay. that's my preference. You know. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess you can watch wear a pocket watch. You just like, it's not of, But the thing is that you need to have an out whole outfit built around it right like you need to have the little chain mm -hmm. that links up to your, what do you link it up to now like you, you have to have a three-piece suit that links up to that whatever or do you where do you i actually don't even know where you link it up i guess you could put it on your belt loop or your nipple ring um, I was just, don't you link it someplace on your chest yeah it was uh i think it was daniel's prince philip was that it is that the piercing that you got was it Prince Philip or Prince, Prince Charles? Charles? <laughs> this one I just Charles. is this one I just say I, I no no comment or it's, it's the Duke of Taint piercings. Um, well, I think uh, that's a good transition to what I'm aiming for. It's Wimbledon. I think it's the Wimbledon uh, green dial gold president. I could see myself. <laughs> so I think rich. it's so ridiculous and I never would have aspired oh. to it. But then like, uh, you know, having the green dial gold Daytona, I think it would really kill it. And yeah, I think it's way over the top, but I think it's either that or hmm, I think I'm between that and I think I need to go vintage and I'd be thinking about trading up my 5513 I'm thinking about maybe a, like a Steve McQueen Explorer 2, uh, the original Explorer 2. Um, I, I saw one of them in the flesh and I can't get it out of my mind. So I think those are my two new versus old options. Oh, there's also the other new uh, option that I think is a little bit more balanced in this ridiculous list. Um, and that would, and, but it's like severely unobtainable is the, um, uh, it's the, Di not dynamite it's the uh, meteorite uh, dial uh, Daytona we can go that's that's the new name for it it's the dynamite I think that's pretty good for dynamite that's better yeah I like that it's the Daytona meteorite dial uh, in the, the gray with the white gold on the rubber strap um, yeah I I didn't really exactly fully get the white gold Daytona on the rubber strap um, but I think that the meteorite dial might clinch it i don't know it just looks right in the photos i really want to see it in person but apparently it's like impossible i don't think they've even received a single shipment at my my 80s we'll see these are pipe dreams all right let's get into watch news what's new uh, daniel i think you you're gonna introduce us to the uh, newest bit of uh, kits that was actually released uh from hodinkee as a an exclusive i think yeah, it looks like that they've just done another uh, another exclusive release, the Hamilton Khaki Pilot. This time, it's the uh, the Pioneer, or is it Khaki Pilot Pioneer? Yeah, there we go. And uh, it's from as far as I understand, it's a take on their field watch that they've now taken the same kind of mecha mecha mechanics and. Um, introduce some more pilot watch design cues 
So I think aesthetically speaking, I quite like it. It comes in just under a thousand bucks in the States. And uh, as far as I know, you can walk straight into your Hodinkee showroom and purchase it over their website anytime if you wanted it. So I'm not going to break any, you know, break any banks or break, uh, break any new records. But I think stylistically, it's quite appealing. What do you guys think? Yeah. I'm gonna go for, yeah, go, go ahead, Peter. I'm gonna pull it up right here. Yeah, I was gonna say I want to make sure I'm looking at the right watch here. I have the right watch in mind. It's the one that was on like the NATO style strap. Yes. Oh, oh. no, no, uh, it's on a leather strap that's like uh, got the old vintage cues and it's got the maybe this was the one I, was... I like it though. I mean, definitely, it's got like you see a lot of vintage cues in it. I like whatever the. The dials got going on with it too. It almost looks like it's like a slate dial or something like that with like the kind of the rough look. Maybe that's just my my um let me see, let me adjust my brightness here. Maybe that's just my screen, but I think it's a really nice shape and I love that the crown is so prominent. It reminds yeah, me of good. the IWC uh that's pilot series. Just... How big is it? Oh, it's 38 millimeter. Yeah, so it's not overly too big. Yeah, I definitely could see this being something. Uh, I like it's cool. It's It's got a, that's the one I was looking at was the one there. But no, yeah, it's it's got a very like kind of vintage vibe to it. I like the overall uh, overall look to it. There's lots think, of cool features. I think Hamilton does a good job with the field watch. And I think they poured a lot of the DNA into the this pilot pioneer. Obviously, it's going on the general trend of vintage old watches. It's certainly smaller. It's got the patina uh, kind of appearance to the dial. It's like almost like a, an aged pebbly texture. And then um, certainly the font and the numerals are a, a much more vintage cue. And it's nice that they keep it quite streamlined. I almost wish that the Hamilton name and logo were a little bit more vintagey. I, I get the sense that this is probably their their new current design. It'd be nice if it was just actually if they stripped it of the Hamilton and it just had the H. I think that would look awesome. Um, to me, I'd actually prefer it without too many things on the dial. And I think it would achieve it even more so. I also like the strap. I think that the brown strap, and I'm not usually a brown strap guy, I think the brown strap actually pulls it off. Um, so I think it, it gets a, a good win for me for a thousand bucks US. I, I think it would be really great. And I think you could throw it on a lot of different straps. I think it would look awesome on a NATO as well. That's what I was just thinking as well. It would look really good on a NATO. Yeah, for sure. There's a couple watches that it reminds me of. One is a watch, I mean, a line of watches by Seiko. And another is a line of watches by Horus. So, you know, Seiko is probably a, a comparable price point or up to a comparable price point, but also at a much, much lower buy-in. And then there's, you know, Oris, which has some similar design cues with the hands, like I guess the Arabic hands and some, and the number design. And um, that's a, you know, double the price point. But um, I wonder if Hamilton might run into some issues when trying to straddle that straddle that uh, dollar value and cut between Seiko who makes like, you know, an incredible product and Oris who also makes an incredible product. That Speaking of things that you want to straddle, how more, about but... what do you think? Yeah. The three Pateks, new update. Yeah, they look amazing. I, we've got uh, three different yeah. uh, new chronographs that were just released. Um, this one, you've got the rose gold 5204 grand complication that I think to me actually speaks to the, me the most and is just completely outside of my budget. Even the, the stainless steel is ridiculously uh, expensive. And I think it's kind of nice that they have another option for stainless steel that they most likely won't even have accessible to anyone. Um, but to me, actually, none of these really stand out. Uh, what do you think? I think rose gold on brown that's that's a look that i couldn't pull off or this very bright green dial with i don't know this this bracelet looks to me like not a good 
entry level like Seiko, not a you know, like one maybe a Casio or something like that. I mean, that's not to knock Seiko, but I certainly they don't have great bracelets. I'd say I think we all have Seikos, but uh, I really hate the bracelet on on that uh, 5905 uh, stainless steel chronograph. What do you guys think, Daniel? Does this get a get a yes because it's green, or does this get a no because nope? I, you know, I, I tend to like the most expensive thing that I can see here. So I like, you know, I like the, <laughs> I like the one with the grand complication here. Um, I believe that they're, they're difficult to, um, to be critical of though, because they seem to have an understanding of the future, not just a grasp of time and manage to market their products in ways that in 10 years from now, I might like, I will have to completely reevaluate my opinion on their, on their products because they managed to, yeah, they really managed to play that long game with their, with their brand. What about you guys? Peter? I, uh, yeah, you know, kind of with you boys as well, I would say out of all three of them, the one that kind of does jump out to me the most is probably the grand comp just, I'm like, I'm per like, I love certain colors, but I'll tell you one thing for me that I'm like, not the biggest fan of on a watch is the green. I don't know why, but it just doesn't do it for me. Like the, I like the, the Kermit is good. The Hulk is like, I'm very don't listen I, yeah, to I, I tell you, I like the Kermit cause there's not like too much green on it, but the Hulk is almost like a little. So the thing is, I love like the, if I'm now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the far right one is like their world timer or whatever it's called. And yeah. I think, uh, I, I absolutely love that watch. And I think it's beautiful. Like there, some of the other versions they've done of it, I think it's really cool. The green one personally just doesn't do it for me. And same kind of thing with the, the far left one, just the normal complication. Uh, the, it looks like it's a chronographer, uh, maybe, but uh, yeah, it just doesn't personally do it for me. Like you said, the bracelet's kind of weird. The grand complication out of the three of them does it for me. But even if I had the money, it would not be the watch I would be jumping towards either any, all three of them, honestly, not really my big thing. I like, I like Patek in a lot of ways. Those just don't do it for me. Well, I think that that brings us to car updates. Um, so we're going to make a rough transition from watches to cars. Um, what are you boys uh, driving now today? <laughs> <laughs> today I didn't drive. I went for a nice long walk. Enjoyed the lake. It was it was beautiful out there. I'll pass it on to you guys. Well, it, I I really want uh, Peter to drop the mic and be like, I I just dropped dropped uh, some ladies off in my ambulance. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was pretty uh, pretty anticlimactic. I drove to school and drove back in my truck. That was but that's basically about all all I did today, unfortunately, but. Wish I had something exciting. I got a cool memory this morning of the, the Porsche, but that was about all the most ex driving excitement I had for today. Did you? Well, yeah. well that's so one I my garage updates are that uh, the bring a trailer uh, listing for my F355 95 uh, manual Berlinetta was not successful. I think that there were just too many questions about its, uh, its originality because it had like a prior claim and from the transition from US to Canada, um, you know, I think somebody screwed up in the documentation of mileage. So they thought maybe it's a rollback, but it was totally clear on the documents. Regardless, immediately I had it sold tentatively verbally uh, to a doc and he said, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll buy it as soon as he's able to release the funds after the weekend. He totally fell through. And there's probably a reason why, you know, his uh, current institution is, is uh, kind of wrapping on the wrist. Uh, but uh, that's the, the last dig I'll make at him. Um, I actually found a local buyer uh, who ended up uh, keeping it right nearby, uh, who's adding it to his collection. Um, so I'm glad that it's going to a good home. I'm also glad to recoup those costs and maybe put it towards something that's that's uh, going to make me happy, at least for the short term. Um, but we were talking about what would we do if there were some unique things that you can't replicate, 
that really, you know, it was a good short term experience, um, but maybe you need to keep a little bit with you with this uh, car. So I think the 355 driving experience for a few months was really cool, but this was really the best part. It was the Ferrari toolkit that uh, I cheaply kept to myself. <laughs> and for those who are not watching the YouTube, uh, the YouTube, the YouTube uh, video, we've got the toolkit here and I'm going to awkwardly try to open it up and show you what's on inside. Um, so here's the, the Ferrari tools and they're, they're like all marked. I'm going to try not to drop them on the, the computer. Uh, and we've got like, oh yeah, that's one, that one was just about to pop right out. Uh, but they've got like the Ferrari uh, markings right on them. And it that's looks so like cool. little Pepe engraved uh, Ferrari and Enzo said, yes, make it so. Uh, so I am super happy that I got to keep it. It even has like belts that are like from 95. So definitely would you know, breathe on them and they'll turn to dust. I also uh, cheaply kept the manual binder book and put the manuals into some random binder <laughs> for the next owner. I didn't say that I was including them. And uh, the original, the prior owner uh, had a Momo steering wheel that was an aftermarket. I put the original one. So uh, I got the Momo steering wheel and it, it's a little bit rice, I would say. That's slightly That's... racist, but it's got the carbon fiber bits. I kind of like that I kept it. I think it's kind of cool. So. Super. Yeah, that's me being cheap, taking something from the car. Don't buy a car from me, everyone. Uh, just so you know, I'll keep some something from it. It might be just car mats. It might be a manual. I think this is the most that I've ever stolen off of a car in a real resale. Um, what do you guys think? Is it kosher? And sorry for, you know, you <laughs> misappropriating your words. Is it okay to... Uh, for those who don't know, Daniel is, is Jewish and I'm trying not to be racist, but um, the bad joke. Um, is it okay for you to um, keep and take certain parts that should go along with the car um, to yourself for the memories? Feel free to shame me. If you don't, if you're not specific, if it's something like you're not, it depends on, I guess it depends on the reason. Like, I would think if I like buy a vehicle that's going to show up with floor mats, but like if, if something like, like the toolkit where, uh, where, um, I don't know, that's, that's something that's fairly significant where if it's included, it's included. But if you didn't include it, I mean, that's also like, if you, like you said, if you didn't include it before, then I mean, that's fair. But yep. yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just personally me. I would like. Well, to clarify, the cars did have floor mats. It's just that <laughs> the car might have come with two floor mats, or maybe I replaced floor mats with other floor mats that were inferior, that kind of thing. <laughs> Daniel, you I... had a, a personal experience with my sketchy dealings with cars, particularly no, I, with the Subaru. Uh... I actually, I can't say anything bad. I can't say anything <laughs> bad about you and uh, your dealings with cars. I don't think they've, they've been sketchy, actually, just to, just to put it right. But <laughs> I also have kept things from cars that I have bought and sold in the past. So it's difficult for me to reprimand you over, you know, behavior that I've also dabbled in. <laughs> Come on, look at this. Yeah, it's so Ferrari. So it is Apparently so this toolkit is like 1500 bucks and this is like all mint unused. It's concourse level. Smell it. Oh, <laughs> it smells like an Enzo. <laughs> okay. Sorry That's for way way for all the way, people who way are more Jewish than a Hamilton. Time. Sorry, Daniel, you go ahead. I was say it's worth way more than a Hamilton. Same price on eBay? No. <laughs> I don't know. Hamilton does that. Hamilton does look pretty damn good for a thousand dollars. It looks damn good. But I think we need to talk about what really looks good, and I think that leads us to my next thing that is really tempting me here. So here we have for those who are not uh, viewing the video, uh, 2018 911 GT2 RS high sack package in paint to sample volcano gray metallic. That's for sale locally and it's tempting the hell out of me. And, uh, you know, I've been holding the G-Wagon waiting for the right trade in. The thing about this is it looks so good in some ways, but I don't know if it reflects me 
And I feel like I'm torn similar to when we were with the 812 GTS. I feel like the GT2 definitely reflects me. And from what rumors I've heard, perhaps, you know, uh, technologies might be changing and maybe it's, it's a good idea for me to get into the GT2, but that's me speculating. Um, but regardless, I think I've had a GT3 RS 991.2 this is the step up, definitely. If I were to stay in the modern era 991.2, uh, I feel like I would be regressing if I went to like a GT3 Touring, which I think is so overpriced. To me, a GT2 RS, the prices currently are pretty much stable and haven't gone nuts like everything else in the performance car market. So I think this is a cool car. I think it's cool to have it paint to sample. I definitely think that they wasted the paint to sample spec by going with Volcano Gray, which is like, uh, to, uh, to my knowledge, I think is primarily used on Macans and Cayennes, um, but it does look really good in person. And I really want to see it outside. Uh, let's, let's hear your reactions. Daniel. Yeah. I want to, I want to see this car. Yeah. She's a beauty. <laughs> What you don't get is how much the carbon fiber pops with this color. Um, and it's a very dynamic color because it's metallic flake. Um, so it goes from gray to black to uh, hints of blue and green in it. Um, also, um, we were just talking about the new Batman trailer and this car, if there were ever a modern Batmobile, it's definitely <laughs> this even with the yellow brake calipers and, you know, God, it looks good. The other thing that I think that they sort of, well, it's restrained and it's kind of nice. I'm glad that, you know, for a long-term perspective, it's good, but the interior is very, very subdued. So this is like probably the most conservative GT2 that you could possibly get in paint to sample, but the steering wheel is also leather as well as the shifter. Pretty much most of the GT2 RSs have colors and painted stuff. Um, I really actually like the interiors that have the red splashes, like the old GT3 RS 4.0. Um, but this one is like very gray, black and leather, um, which I think would age very nicely. But the thing is, is this a purchase for a long hauler or is this a purchase to tick that box to be like, I'll own that for a year or two. And to me, I think it's more the latter than the former. Um, so I'm, I'm vacillating and the price just came down a little bit. Um, I think for the right price, I might, might consider it. I don't know. Peter, should I, should I pull the trigger? Oh man, I would love to see this car in person. It looks so good. It's like, I, I it's like you said, that is a very like valid point kind of thing. Like, is it the car? Like, you see yourself but at some point though i don't that's also a question i don't know if you're going to answer until you've like been in it or you've had that experience sometimes right so it's like you could be asking yourself that forever until you've actually like you know had the owner's experience and it's like oh shoot because i've heard so many things about these cars and i've heard they're like you know they're they're pretty damn far up there for what their capabilities are and things like that right just i mean a lot of porsches are but you're uh I think like once you actually would get the experience to be behind the wheel, it'd be very interesting. But like you said, it looks like it looks so frigging good. I don't, I, oh. It's Objectively, like, it ticks a lot of boxes. Um, it's, you know, it's paint to sample, it's bisac package, and it's got the magnesium wheels. But again, I would never have used all of those, you know, high points. In the way that it was implemented yeah. so paint a sample i'd go we were talking about voodoo blue or some of the interesting paint a sample colors there's currently cars there's only i think two other paint samples in canada for sale and they're asking crazy money because they have no mileage this has higher mileage to me i don't care i just want to drive it i don't care about making it a collector car it does have 7500k which is higher for a gt2 rs but come on that's not a high milder. I want to just drive it. The other thing is this does show some patina. There's a few uh, dings, mostly to the paint protection film. I also picked up a rock chip that was like filled 
Um, so it looks like I've driven it. That's like right in the middle of the windshield. Um, it's also got black matte uh, magnesium wheel, wheels. I'm not a fan of black wheels, but that being said, God damn, this is the car that Bruce Wayne would drive, isn't it? And there's something and kind of interesting where it's like they're the person who put this car together uh, in their head. It's like they tried to make one of the most conspicuous Porsches ever made subtle. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. I don't like. So there does that also make it less special? Do you want a daily drive beast? I think that's kind of awesome. Can you imagine just driving around in the middle of downtown, ripping through Toronto, downtown core with no traffic and just hearing this whale just bouncing off all of the, oh God, I think I'm selling it. Yeah. You know, the problem is that if I buy this, I have to be doubling down on the douche factor and I have to get like a personalized plate that says like the dark night or the yes. deal or something like that. Yeah, and then I'm definitely getting peed, and then I'll never get the paint to match. You know that'll happen with this paint. Oh, if you get something like, like Dark Knight, people will just call you Dick Knight all the time. <laughs> Dick Knight. I, I want to actually just put uh, Batman, but with like BT Man, and then I I just want it to turn into like a Seinfeld episode where it's like, Hey, Batman, there's the ass man. All right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a cool car. I think it, it depends on the price ultimately. You know, right okay. now it's 429 uh, all in. And to me, if we could shave off maybe 10 to 15, I, I could definitely see that happening, especially if I get a good trade value on my G Wagon. So. And what are the, uh, like, what are, other Porsches going at like at the half a million dollar price range, you know, like, like what else can you buy for a half for that price? That's a Porsche. And is like, this is one of the fastest Porsches ever made, you know? So, so that's the thing is, I think that's a good question. And it certainly needs to also be balanced with other sports cars, but at that price range, the only thing that really stands out is, do you go older and do you go for a GT3 RS 4.0, 997? Um, but those have really gone up. Everything's gone up, but these, and this is actually the, the cheapest, if you could say cheapest, it's the lowest listed car. They say that it's the, a firm price, but to me, if I made it happen and we could just go a little bit lower, I feel like Although it might not necessarily tick all of my boxes immediately, I think it'd be super cool. Um, the other thing that you know comes to mind is going back to the speciality question: Will the right speciality come up? There's a few specialities out there, but still, then we're talking about putting another hundred k in. And to me, this car is crazy. The thing is, the speciality is like a forever car. The GT2, I don't, I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Um, but for what it's worth, think about it in my collection, which isn't a collection. Now I've lost the 355, the 430 isn't a daily driver. This car, as crazy as it is for like a sports car, supercar, this car could be daily driven. It's got a front axle lift. It's got all of the nannies in it. It will make me super happy. I can daily drive it. Um, it's PDK, yeah. I think I'm selling on it. I'm selling myself on it, but we'll see. We'll see what kind of deal I can strike here. Yeah, I think it's, it, it could be interesting to have that and the 430 side by side, you know. The crazy thing is seeing this right next to a 911R and just staring at this. I mean, the 911R is cool and the one that's right next to it is a weird spec with lava orange and green stripes it's basically a pumpkin uh, with <laughs> yellow yellow calipers uh, that's just a lot of discordant colors to me um so i think that this was definitely the more tasteful thing it was clearly whoever owned these two cars a gt2 rs in basically gray black versus uh someone who had like a pumpkin 911r these are two completely different people 
But the thing is, you know, I've owned a gray black GT3 RS 997.2. I don't know why that wasn't more of an issue as this is. I think probably I like that color a little bit more because it was more of a flat black. And I guess I've seen so many other really unique colors and I really love the GT2 RS in Guards Red or in GT Silver to the point where I actually think that they look probably better than this. Um, but it's kind of cool to be like, this is a paint to sample and it's super dynamic and it's super under the radar. I don't think you can go wrong with it, but we'll see. Yeah, I think I've dwelled on, on it enough, but maybe we'll have updates for next week. With, uh, <laughs> with that being said, I think you guys need to give me your aspirations for the next, uh, next pursuits. Daniel, what's next on your radar? More it's car pursuit. Well, I've uh, I hadn't shared this information yet. It's it's not that exciting, but I decided to renew the insurance on my on my car, so I'm going to keep driving my Benz for the next for the next next while, unless unless I come up come up with a better plan. That makes me what about you, Peter. Yeah, no, no changes in the the vehicle. Uh, area for the foreseeable future at least i uh i'm basically just gonna drive my vehicle until it dies and then after that i'll figure it out from there but no i don't i don't know like vehicles for me it's like that's like something like that is like a more of like a long-term thing because at the moment right now i'm more on the practical side where it's like i could i see where and i can only also obviously afford one vehicle at the moment so it's like once I get into the, the aspect of maybe being able to afford one, more than one vehicle, I would consider something a little bit more exciting. But at the moment, it's more of the practical side of life, which isn't always the most fun, but it's, it's kind of what, what's needed. Funny that you're so much younger than us and you're the most mature of all of us. <laughs> the child. I'm we the need to get you a Ford Raptor, and then you'll be the least mature out of all of yeah. us. <laughs> I could, oh, yeah, I could mess with one of those. Doesn't mean I still can't have fun in a truck, right? Turn right. Oh, okay. It know. looks so good. Some of these Just angles, it. when you're looking at it <laughs> at the, the quarter panel angle in the front and the back, it looks so damn good. Okay, here's another issue though. <laughs> so this is measured out to be exactly the height that I can get my lift up to with the 430 on on top. So That's oh. <laughs> and then I measured out the height of this. This is shorter than a golf R. So um, the GT2 might just, you know, push it to the edge. <laughs> There's ways around that. Like you can take air out of the tires. My dad, with his 944, he takes the air out of his tires and, help, and gets a little bit of height to be able to bring it out. And then he actually cut a hole into his ceiling so that it could actually go up a bit yeah. more. Um, I guess I can make the garage door kind of come up not as much, but yeah, it'll be tight. Um, I guess the, I mean, the, these are difficult challenges, the most privileged of challenges, but we'll, we'll see. I think ultimately I just got to decide on the car and, and find a way to make it work if, uh, if the car is right. Yeah. So no Patek Philippe's for us. Maybe we'll stick to Hamilton's yeah. and maybe we'll pull off the Batmobile um but yeah how cool would it be to just <laughs> roll up in this thing though <laughs> it's it's not a, roll up in a gt2 rs with a hamilton on your wrist <laughs> <laughs> hey you know that's the thing is like i think that we're all on the same level that regardless of what we're shopping for we're all passionate about it right so i mean i can appreciate anything from a, a Casio to a, a Hamilton to a Rolex to a Patek. Um, same thing with cars. You know, I can appreciate your your Benz. Some great memories in that. I I mean, I enjoy driving my stupid Civic when I get new all season tires, to the point of like driving the 430 and then previously <laughs> driving a GT3 RS, driving a Pista and a, a, a Speciale. So um, it's all about the passion of it, and I think you can enjoy these things regardless of what level you're at. I don't really see it as a, a hierarchy. Although um, I think that Daniel did, no, no, not Daniel. Peter did shit on green watches. So with that, <laughs> I'm going to end and I'm going to smash my permit right or sermit right into the, 
photo lens here of the YouTube video. <laughs> Thank you very much for tuning in to uh, Three Aficionados. Um, we'll be back next week, hopefully, if we can get our shit together. And, uh, you know, thank you very much and keep it all analog. See you later. Take care. Have a good night.